Hey guys, Virtus here and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 beginner tutorial series and in today's episode we're going to be continuing on with our save game, uh, save game systems. More specifically, we're going to be showing you how you can create a basic checkpoint system. So what this is going to do is essentially save the location of the player and then from that we're going to be able to set the location for when we load the level. So they actually, you know, save and they can load the progress on their level. So I'm going to be breaking this down into two episodes. The first one is going to be setting the location of the player and the checkpoint so they know how uh, so we know how far he's got into the level and in the second video we're going to be moving the player at the start of the game based on the location that we set using the checkpoint. So if you take a quick look in my scene here, when I run over to this little uh, invisible object, you can see I'm essentially saving a location, and this is going to be a vector variable. And we're going to store this into the save game file. Now if you haven't actually watched the save game uh, videos, I advise that you click the thumbnails to check them out now, as you will need to watch them and understand how all of this works to actually follow along with this tutorial. So anyway, let's go ahead and have a look at exactly what's happening inside of my checkpoint. So first things first, when I actually begin overlapping with the checkpoint, the box collision in there, it's just going to do a cast to third person character. We're going to do this to get the actor location, and we're going to get this actor location as a vector value. And a vector value means it's going to store uh, three uh, values, either X, Y, and Z, RGB, or something like that. But for us, we're going to use that for X, Y, and Z. And we're going to set a location uh, variable to wherever the actor location is. So the location of the player. And then we're just going to print string that just so we can see that it's actually been displayed in the screen. The location is all good. And then we just have our simple save game logic, which basically checks whether or not a save game exists. If it does, uh, if, or if it doesn't, um, it just creates a save game object or loads game and then just essentially sets the lo last location in our save game in the my save game to uh, the new location that we just arrived at. Now you can actually use multiple checkpoints and it will all work just the same. Um, use the same blueprint, just scatter them around the level and it will just update the last location to that. So if you're going to have a linear level you can just keep moving them 1, 2, 3, 4 as the level progresses and it will work brilliantly. Um, so yeah, anyway, without further ado, let's get into this and show you how we can do all of this. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up my save game. Now once again, if you haven't seen the save game stuff, I advise that you go ahead and take a look at it. For now, I'm just going to quickly create a new save game object. So to do that, I'm just going to right click, I'm going to go to blueprint class, and I'm going to add an actor, and under the all classes under the search, just type in save game and make sure that is a save game class and not a my save game class. You can name this whatever you want. For now, I'm going to call this, oh, hold up. I'm going to name this, uh, let's say, checkpoint save game. And then I'm going to open that up just like this. And under variables, I'm going to add a new variable. And I'm just going to call this last location. Now this is one of the most important steps, make sure you change that to a vector, a 3D vector so we can actually store the X, Y and Z value of the player. So once that's done, that is everything in the save game. Now it's all down to the logic inside of our, you know, our blueprint, our checkpoint blueprint. So you can see I've got my checkpoint blueprint here already, I'm going to leave that how it is. I'm going to get rid of it from the scene and I'm going to create a new checkpoint blueprint. So once again, I'm just going to create a new blueprint class. I'm going to just leave this as a normal actor and I'm going to call this checkpoint BP. And then I'm going to open it up and we're going to do a few things. So first things first, I'm going to add a box collision so we can actually check whenever and reference whenever, or not reference, but event, create an event for whenever the player actually walks over it. And with this in the scene, I can see it's a bit too small, 
I'm going to make sure it's nice and big so it actually encompasses a nice area so the easier is definitely going to catch into it and we fire off all of our checkpoint stuff because if the player doesn't go through it when you want to it's just going to go back to the checkpoint before and you know it's not too good for us so I'm going to add a nice big checkpoint just like this. Now then inside of this we need to start creating our logic. So the way our logic is going to work it's going to be around a begin overlap event so I'm going to go ahead and create one of those and the other actor is going to be the player character so what I'm going to do is type in cast to third person character now for you this is going to be whatever your player character is I'm using the third person template so I'm just going to roll with this for now and from this I'm going to get the actor location and the reason why is because I want to be able to set the actor location to the save game variable so it's going to get the actor location right now so as soon as you walk over it and then it's going to store that in the save game but for now I'm actually going to set this into our own little variable inside of here just to make things easier so what I'm going to do is create a new variable called location once again I'm going to set it to a vector and once we've got the return value for get actor location I'm going to type in set location just like that so now it's actually going to store the location of our player character inside of the checkpoint blueprint. Now this is only stored temporarily on the RAM so it's not going to persist. Once we do our save game stuff that will all work out perfectly for us. So right now I'm just going to quickly do a print string uh, just to check whether or not it's actually saving the location. So I'm going to go ahead and add in the print string, hook up the return value for location to the string and then I'm going to go ahead and press play and once I run over it you can see it's now storing my location at the top left hand corner in our print string and if I wanted to I could reference that later on and do all the magical stuff where we move the player to the you know the location that we set so now that we've done that we need to do our save game logic now this is where it gets a little bit complicated and this is definitely why you should have watched the video that I mentioned earlier so the first thing we're going to do is do a check to see whether or not a save game already exists. So to do that just type in does save game exist and under slot name we need to make sure that we use the same slot name throughout this entire system that we've got here. If you wanted to you could create a variable for this um, so that it's definitely the same but for now I'm just going to call this checkpoint slot and there we go. And from this we're going to do the branch and this is just going to tell us you know change this uh, save game stuff to a true or false and just check whether or not it is and then we can just fire off stuff based on the true or false value so if there isn't one already what we're gonna have to do is create a save game object and if it is true and if there is one we need to load game from slot and once again with the slot name over here we need to make sure we use the same slot name so I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste this so control C control V and put it in there and under save game class we need to make sure that we use the save game that we just created or the one that you used previously um, if you're using the same if you that's if you've got everything in the same uh, checkpoint save game so there we are and now if we go ahead and take a look at my my other one not this one my other blueprint you can see we've still got a fair bit left to go in here once we've done that we need to start saving uh, setting the save a subclass cast to the my save game and then set the location so let's go ahead and do that so what I need to do inside of here is create a subclass and this is just going to allow us to handle and play around with the save game information before you save it. So what I'm going to do is create a new variable and I'm going to call it saver subclass and we're going to change the variable type from a vector and we're going to make sure it is a save game. So press vector type on the little drop down and type in save game and make sure it is just a normal save game object and not a checkpoint save game, my save game or any of the other ones. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, I'm going to press compile and there we go. And now we've done that we're going to go ahead and set this and we're going to make two of these nodes and we're going to hook it up just like this. 
So we're just going to set the load game and create save game just like that. So what we need to do now is actually cast to our save game object so that we can actually begin referencing um, our last location value. So over in checkpoint blueprint, not checkpoint blueprint, or checkpoint save game, we've got last location. We need to start casting to this so we can actually reference it. So doing that is quite simple. So just type in uh, cast to checkpoint blueprint or whatever you named it. And then just hook up the object wildcard to the return value for set. And we're going to do this twice because we want to do it on both sides. And once again, just do the same thing. And now, as the checkpoint blueprint, what I can do is I can actually get a reference to last uh, set last location. Hold up. Okay, just give me a second. Let's see what's going on here. Okay, so you can see I'm actually referencing to checkpoint blueprint, which is a mistake. I actually need to be casting to checkpoint uh, save game, not the blueprint. That's because it's the save game that actually stores the information. So once again, I'm just going to hook it up just like that. And from here, we can actually now reference get last location, or we can set the last location, and so on. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to go ahead and set the, uh, set the last location. So we're going to change it from whatever it is now, whether that's zero or the last one that we used, we're just going to change it to the new updated value. So what I'm going to do is ref get this out and set last location. And I'm going to hook this up just like this. And I'm going to do the same thing on both sides. And now this is where it gets a little bit easier. So if you remember, we created the location variable uh, previously. What I can do is just drag this out, get a reference to it, and then just hook it up to last location here and here. So what it's going to do it's essentially going to change the last location variable so it's equal to location. So the location is the new value and it's going to chuck it into last location and make sure those are both the same. So if I go ahead and compile it, press play, make sure there's no errors, you can still see that it's still working. That is perfect. So now what we got to do is just save the location, the last location. So what we got to do is just save the game to the slot. So drag this off and type in save game to slot and do the same thing for both sides. And once again, under slot name, you got to make sure this is the same as it is over here. So I'm going to press control C and I'm going to make sure slot name is exactly the same on both of these. And under save game object, we need to hook this up to our saver subclass. So I'm going to get a reference to that and I'm going to hook it up just like this. So both of those can use the same subclass and I'm going to press compile. And just double check all of your slot names to make sure they're the same. And under create save game object, make sure you've got your save game class to the new one you just created or whichever one your last location is set to. And hopefully now this should all work. So what I'm going to do here is just one last print string and under uh, the string, I'm just going to change that to whether or not it has been saved. So I'm going to hook this up like that. And I'm going to hook this up like that. And I'm going to go ahead and press compile. And I'm going to press play. So once we go in there, it should say either true or false in the top left hand corner to let us know whether or not it's been saved. So it's been saved once, saved twice saved three times you know and so on and so forth and it's going to keep on saving this so even if i was to have more than one of these checkpoints scattered around the level so if i move it down here and i go and walk into it it's going to save the new location so you've got one down here for 7.866 uh, and i can keep on updating it just like that so this is pretty much everything for today's episode in the next one I'm actually going to be showing you how to load the location and then move the character of the location so we can actually get some proper level progression so we can move him to wherever he, wherever he got 
you know, before he closed the game or before he ended the level and so on. So hopefully you should have a good understanding of how we can save the location, how we can reference it, how we can change it, and you understand save game stuff a little bit better. So thanks for watching, comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.